Max from Where the Wild Things Are. Both kids will be trick-or-treating in style. That's awesome because it, it, it doesn't make the wheelchair like a, like a tool. It's actually something that's kind of fun for her to do. That was Cherise LeClaire reporting. President Donald Trump announces that he's taking steps to lower some prescription drug prices for Americans. A new proposal from the Department of Health and Human Services would have payment for certain drugs better reflect international prices that people in other countries pay. Well, the department says that U.S. patients and programs like Medicare would see an overall savings of roughly more than $17 billion over five years. Congress would not need to approve the rules changes. It would just need to pass a standard rulemaking review. The plan would mostly cover drugs administered in outpatient clinics of doctor's offices, not general pharmacy prescriptions. An amazing discovery after a fire at a historic church in Massachusetts that we first told you about earlier this week is now providing renewed faith for its parishioners. Look at this painting of Jesus that was inside the church at the time of the fire. It was untouched by the flames. The First Baptist Church in Massachusetts, about 15 miles outside of Boston, went up in flames during severe storms. The cause of the fire is under investigation, but neighbors tell investigators they saw the church get hit by lightning moments before the fire broke out. All right, Jim, that is pretty amazing there. Um, but we want to turn things to the weather and all eyes on you for the weekend forecast. <laughs> well, unfortunately, the weekend is looking a little bit damp. Definitely not a washout, but okay. if you take a look at your forecast for today, we should remain dry. Plenty of cloud cover around. Temperatures today will be topping out upper 40s and low 50s. Weekend forecast scattering Saturday and Sunday. All right, we're going to toss things over to Bob and Mary on the morning blend, but we'll be back with more news right here. Fox 47, stay with us. You're watching Fox 47 Morning News at 7. Back on the blend this morning, we have Ken Wisner with us with AirServe. Always good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Seems like the cool weather is, is pretty much here to stay. Winter is really coming, <laughs> and we're really starting to use our furnaces. So I want to talk about furnace tune-ups. Are they necessary after a, a, the long break, and why are they so important? Good question, and like any piece of mechanical equipment, it's, it's always a good idea. Um, it's usually easier to, to do it beforehand than find it yourself in an emergency. Mm -hmm. Right, right, so, right yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So how do we know if, if we need to do a tune-up, if it's necessary? Well, obviously we had a hot summer and there's a component that uh, is in your furnace that works with the air conditioner. So we, it, we have worked a lot this year. So um, those parts continue to wear out. They, they do have a, a lifespan and if you don't take care of them, they're gonna, they're gonna shorten. Are there signs that we should look for? Not in particular. Most of it you'd be ignorant to, and not, not in a derogatory way, of course, mm -hmm. but most of you, would, it would, you wouldn't even be aware. It would just stop. Okay. Um, but there's things that we can find that you wouldn't look at, you wouldn't know, um, that we can tell when there's, there's starting to be a problem, and it's always easier to do it planned than in an emergency. Right. So if I call AirSurf for a tune-up, what should I expect, and, and how are AirSurf's tune-ups different than... Good question. The, um, the the expectation right off the fr uh, I guess off the bat is they're they're normally much longer than what you would normally expect, and you should figure about an hour and a half or two hours because we're going to go through every component. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, it's not that hard to do, but you, what you'll find is uh, I guess if 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 you don't get an itemized report, component by component, you're probably missing something. Right. Can, should we do this every year or should you skip years or how, how often should you do it? Well, most people don't do it every year, but because of the cost of furnaces, because of you know, the loss of inefficiencies and things like that, I, I highly recommend annually. Right. How often should we change our, our furnace filters? Great question. There's no one size fits all, no pun intended, but it uh, depends on the filter. It could be uh, uh, every month. In some cases, in, in other cases, depending on the filter, it could be every six months. Wow. Okay. And that is important to saving our furnace, right? Absolutely. It's there for protection. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. I like the point that you made about, you know, prevention and finding out what could be wrong before it actually happens in the middle of winter when you really need it most. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I would agree. All right. Well, we're going to put your information on the screen. Air serve, heating and air conditioning. You can give them a call at... Five six five zero zero eight five, or visit the website airserve.com. Ken, always great to see you. Thanks. And likewise, nice seeing you. That's all our time for now on the Morning Blend. 
Welcome back in. Harry Potter fans are in for a special treat this weekend. The Grand Ledge Area District Library will be hosting a Harry Potter party this Saturday from 2 to 4. Themed snacks and games will be available and guests are encouraged to wear their favorite Harry Potter costume. And we'll have more local events and things to do right here on Fox 47. If you have an event that you want to share, just send us an email around town at fox47news.com. And now for a look at more of what's going on around town, let's toss things over to our Around Town reporter. Here's what's going around town for kids like me. If space is the final frontier, you can discover space at Abrams Planetarian at the Michigan State University. Abrams Planetarian has dedicated its weekends to shows for family just like yours. The shows are a great way for children to be introduced to various and fascinating space-related topics where they can learn all the weird and wonderful facts about what goes on up in our universe. You will be amazed with what you might see. Perhaps you will see the craters of the moon up close or maybe you will see the rings of Saturn with your very own eyes, or maybe even the big spot on Jupiter. These sessions occur about twice a month from April to October, so make sure you get in early and don't miss out. For this and more events for kids like you, visit fox47news.com. I'm Shelby Galan, now back to Fox 47 Studios. Well, you know, it happens a lot once the holidays start rolling around. Thieves taking packages from strangers' porches. But wait until you see how one Texas homeowner caught an alleged thief. Michelle Tull was on break at work when she got an alert on her phone. You know, she has one of those digital doorbells that lets you see who's at your door through a mobile app. Well, sure enough, she opened that app up and saw a woman taking her packages from her porch. So she confronted her. What are you doing? Is this Deborah's okay. house? No, no, it's not. Put my packages back on the on the porch. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Who's Deborah? Well, after being caught red-handed, the woman leaves, so Tull called police. Well, those boxes, by the way, were not any expensive electronics or jewelry or something like that. <laughs> this is a nice twist. They were just giant boxes of cat litter. I kind of like that. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> like that. I wonder if she found Deborah and got her packages safe. <laughs> Seriously? I hope so. Where's Deborah? <laughs> All right, well, where's the warmth, Jim? We need uh, it. Oh, the warmth, I think that's down in Florida still, although <laughs> yeah. they also have a little bit more rain, and that's something we don't have yet yeah, should That's be arriving true. this Good. weekend right now though <laughs> things are a little bit warmer than yesterday morning in fact we're about 10 degrees warmer sitting at 37 in lansing 40 degrees currently in jackson 10 to 15 degrees warmer across the board and because of that we do have a shot at hitting the low 50s today even though we do have a lot of cloud cover around that cloud cover looks to stick around throughout the day maybe a couple rain showers mainly south of jackson later this afternoon you'll notice though there's a lot of rain to our north west and south it's those southern showers that give us the best chance of rain today. The western showers should be moving in once we hit the weekend. But your forecast for today, mainly dry conditions. Just a lot of cloud cover, a little bit cooler than average too. Highs making it only into the low 50s. Some lane, late rain showers are possible, mainly south of Jackson. Your 1-800-Hanson's weather kit this morning is Bailey of Hazlitt. Hmm, all right, not too much to complain about weather-wise. No, really not too bad today, and it looks like things are warming up a little bit once we get through the weekend. Okay, gotcha. We'll keep an yeah. eye on that. Thanks, Jim. Well, after the break, some locals are fired up about plans for a gas plant in their farming community. It's a battle over land use and potential change to their way of life. We'll explain next. You're watching Fox 47 Morning News at 7. A court hearing is scheduled today for the Jackson women accused of killing a man earlier this year. 20-year-old Savannah Frinkle and 46-year-old Joanna Taylor are charged with open murder in the death of Marvin Bearden. Police say they found him with stab wounds near the intersection of West Washington Avenue and 1st Street on August 30th. Bearden died the next day. We'll let you know if anything happens at today's hearing. Right now, a former Michigan State football player accused of a rape in mid-Michigan is back behind bars. Records show that Austin Robertson is in the Ingham County Jail. He's accused of sexually assaulting a woman at a Meridian Township apartment in April of last year. Robertson is set to go on trial next month. He had been in Kansas where he was arrested last spring on armed robbery and drug charges. A change in a proposed natural gas plant has a rural mid-Michigan community riled up this morning. Homeowners in Jackson County's Rives Township 
are now upset after a township board adjusted the original project's future land to now include industrial zoning. After hearing complaints, the commission changed the zoning back to agriculture. Confusion remains if it will stay that way. Now, if I wanted to live in the city, I would have moved to the city, but, but the land is part of me now. I wouldn't move. I just stay here. We just grind it out, I guess. We've reached out to the Novi Energy to find out what the company has to say about the proposal, but we have not heard back just yet. The township board is set to vote on the final land use map in December. I'll let you know what happens. State police are hoping that you take the opportunity this weekend to help fight against the state's opioid problem. Tomorrow is National Drug Take Back Day. The idea is to get expired, unused or unwanted pills out of your medicine cabinet without throwing them in the trash or just flushing them down the toilet. And all state police posts as well as the departments on your screen will be accepting prescription medications from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow. You can also drop them off at the Kroger on West Saigon on a highway in Lansing during the same time. All collected pills will be destroyed. Liquids, inhalers, patches and syringes will not be accepted. The newest iPhone hits store shelves today, but which smartphone is the best bang for your buck? Liz McLaughlin explains. Apple shoppers now have three new iPhones to choose from, including the newly released iPhone 10R. Joining the 10S and 10S Max already in stores. Yes, those 10 models are spelled with an X and causing some confusion. It's really hard to keep track of. It's annoying. One notable difference is price. The 10R is $750, hundreds less than Apple's other new models costing $1,000 or more. $750, not cheap, but more value in that phone. The 10R doesn't have the OLED display or dual rear camera that comes with the 10S, but they share more features than not including the same water resistance, processors, and main cameras with smart HDR. By and large, you're getting the same experience, including the ability to do the face unlock. Measuring in at 6.1 inches, the 10R is sandwiched between the other model sizes and comes in a rainbow of options. The colors. But Apple faces a long list of competitors with high quality phones. The LG G7 Thank You. The new super powerful Note. Google's Pixel 3 launched earlier this month with a camera that reviewers tout as the best on the market. There is um, artificial intelligence being applied so that the camera is smarter. But for those looking to stay in the Apple ecosystem. Is this the best iPhone to get right now? Reviewers oh, yeah. say the newly released 10R is a solid bet. That was Liz McLaughlin reporting. Well, Cougars are roaming the state of Michigan, and you're looking right now at evidence to back that claim up. The Michigan DNR says one of its game cameras captured this image of a mountain lion in the far western UP. This cougar was spotted about nine miles north of Ironwood. Since 2008, the DNR has confirmed 38 cougar reports in Michigan, with all but one seen in the Upper Peninsula. That one, if you remember, was right here in mid-Michigan, spotted in Bath Township in June of last year. The U.S. Geological Survey is updating its volcano threat assessments for the first time since 2005, and three volcanoes in California are now considered to be a very high threat. Mount Shasta is number five on a list of the 18 U.S. volcanoes that are a very high threat level. Lassen Volcanic Center is number 11, and Long Valley Caldera is number 18. Mount Shasta is at a higher concern because of where it is located. More than 100,000 people live or work near the hazard zone of the volcano, and an estimated 37 million cars pass by an interstate near the volcano each year. Scientists also say there is a huge concern because important water resources are near the hazard zone. The upper Sacramento River um, feeds out of Mount Shasta. It's within the hazard zone, Shasta Lake Reservoir which is a huge resource to the Bay Delta, um, feeding water to several million people in the San Francisco area all the way down through the Central Valley. The danger list is topped by Hawaii's Kilauea, which was erupting this year. 
Other top dangerous volcanoes on the list are Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier in Washington. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen is expected to view the first completed section of President Donald Trump's border wall with Mexico today. The wall, which stands at 30 feet, was a project long sought out by the president in an effort to secure the nation's borders. Nielsen will hold a news conference with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner during her visit. A group of elementary school students in Illinois are taking their math skills to a whole other level while also supporting veterans. Students at Robert Frost Elementary near Chicago are collecting change for pennies for patriots. The school-wide fundraiser will help pay for pizza parties at VA hospitals across the U.S. through the organization Pizza for Patriots. It's a win-win because not only are the students learning to give back, they are also learning better math skills in, by helping count the change. I feel really good because it's for a good cause. The money will help buy pizzas so the veterans can have pizza parties. Thank you for all you do and for keeping us safe. Every bit of change will go towards providing a slice of pizza for vets at home and abroad. All right, foodies, <laughs> it is time to get your McRib on. Aren't you so excited? Because the McRib is officially coming back to McDonald's next week. Some stores have already started selling the sandwich. And if you don't remember what that sandwich is, it's a boneless pork patty coated in a barbecue sauce, topped with pickles, onions, on a hoagie bun, the McRib has been notoriously hard to find in previous years because each McDonald's may independently decide whether to carry it. But this year, 9,000 out of 14,000 restaurants will have that sandwich. We have a recall warning for you. 137,000 higher top mount refrigerators are being recalled. An electrical component in the refrigerator is causing short circuits and can become a fire hazard. If you have this fridge, stop using it immediately. You can also go to the Higher America's website and schedule a free in-home repair or get a $150 rebate towards a new fridge. Higher America has received three reports of smoke, fire, and associated property damage. No injuries have been reported. I want to turn things over to a meteorologist Jim Holton for a check on the weather this Friday morning. And Jim, how's it looking? Well, it's looking a little bit cloudier than we were at this time yesterday, although that is coming with some warmer temperatures. We had the sunshine around yesterday, which did help us warm up into the upper 40s to near 50 degrees. I think we actually do a degree or two more than that today, mainly due to our warmer start to the day. We've held a lot of cloud cover in place through the overnight hours. That's kept our temperatures up this morning. So 37 right now in Lansing, 39 degrees for St. John's. It is currently 41 in Jackson. And as we check out your planner today, yes, we do keep that cloud cover on pretty much all day. There's even a chance for a couple rain showers once we get into the later evening hours. Best chances for those showers, mainly south of the Jackson area. But because of that warmer start, we're still able to make it up to around 50 or even into the low 50s for your highs. Now, as we check out your satellite and radar picture, it's this system off to our south that provides us with that slight chance of rain showers this afternoon. That's actually the remnants of what is left of what was Hurricane Willa. And it's the very northern and northwestern edge of that that would give us just a glancing blow, so only a few very light rain showers were expected. As we head into the weekend, though, our attention turns to that system off to our west. We will see these rain showers sweeping through on Sunday. And that provides us all with a little bit better chance of seeing some widespread rain. Still shouldn't amount to very much. As we check it all out with the future track, a lot of cloud cover around throughout today. And once we get to the later evening hours, there's a chance for a couple showers, mainly south of Jackson. But as we head into the overnight, those chances start to spread a little further north. So we all at least have the chance for a stray shower tonight and into your day on Saturday. Most of that rain on Saturday really is falling in the morning hours. So once we get to the afternoon, things do look like they start to dry out just a little bit. And we should stay dry Saturday night into Sunday morning as well. Heading into your day on Sunday, though, we'll start to watch for that next line of showers and storms to move in. That will be arriving as we get into the later afternoon hours on Saturday, Sunday. Before today, a couple rain showers moving in late, otherwise mostly cloudy skies. Highs today topping out around 51 degrees. For the overnight, cloudy skies hold on throughout the night, which means again we're not nearly as chilly as we've been used to through the start of the week. A couple scattered rain showers still cannot be ruled out. Lows tonight drop only into the lower 40s. Heading into your day tomorrow, it's a high of 48 degrees, a lot of cloud cover around throughout the day, scattered rain showers again, mainly in the morning hours. Seven day forecast, keeping those highs in the upper 40s for Sunday with a little bit more in the way of rainfall, but we start to clear out through the day on Monday. I think Monday afternoon we end up mostly sunny. 
Temperatures making it into the low to mid 50s for highs on Monday. Tuesday, mid, possibly even upper 50s. Yeah, that's actually pretty much where we should be for this time of year. It's been a while since we've hit those average highs. Couple rain showers moving through late on Tuesday, but as of right now, looks like Wednesday is now dry for those trick or treaters with temperatures <laughs> topping out into the low 50s. More rain though, moving back in on Thursday. So yesterday we had the rain for Wednesday. Uh -huh. Today we've moved it to either side of Wednesday. It's hope we can keep it that way. For right. Trick or treaters. And yeah, and Halloween's already in the middle of the week. A school night. I mean, we so don't we need don't rain. need the rain. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Jim. Yep. Well, still to come. Meet the set of triplets who help deliver the baby of a woman who has a special connection to their own mom. We have the heartwarming details after the break. You're watching Fox 47 Morning News at 7. Now to a heartwarming story about multi-generational giving. It is not your average baby story. It may be a little bit confusing, but stay with me here. Meet a couple of triplets who are also OBGYNs. They recently helped a woman named Anna give birth to her daughter, Mia Sophia. But 26 years ago, the triplet's mother, Dr. Janet Gersten, helped a woman bring in her baby, little bundle of joy there. And guess what that baby's name was? It was Anna. Yes, these triplets have helped bring in the daughter of a patient that their mother helped bring into the world. Grandma says she is really happy that these two families are connected in such a special way. It was a beautiful thing because it's like yeah. my daughter, you know, my, my doctor's daughters are now delivering my grandchild for my daughter. It was just, it was just incredible. It was a beautiful experience. Now, this isn't the first time that this has happened, believe it or not. Dr. Gersten says that the triplets have already helped deliver babies from moms whose mom was Dr. Gersten's patient in the past. The, the mother and daughter, OBGYN, all work together at the mother's medical practice in Florida. Today is National Pumpkin Day. Fun fact, the U.S. produces one and a half billion pounds of pumpkins a year with Illinois growing the most. You've seen pumpkin in almost anything, you know, the granola bars, coffee, even pasta. And don't even get me started on that pumpkin spice. And Jim, I know you're not really a fan of pumpkins, you said. Huh? I, I would call pumpkins a decoration, not <laughs> really so much of a food for me. Okay. Squirrels seem to like them, though. That's true. That is very, very true. Yeah. And today for those pumpkins out there, not getting any frost on them. No, no frost on the pumpkin this morning. <laughs> but the pumpkins should be well preserved in the fairly chilly air. <laughs> yeah. Right now as we take a live look outside in East Lansing, a lot of cloud cover in place, but because of that cloud cover, we're a little more mild to start our day than we were just 24 hours ago. Currently, we're at 37 degrees in Lansing, 41 for both Jackson and Charlotte. Satellite and radar showing the cloud cover that's around for right now. If you look off to our north, west, south, well, you're seeing some rain showers, but luckily those rain showers stay mainly out of our area today. There could be a few that make it into our southern areas later on this evening, but you can expect to see a few rain showers as we head through the weekend. So your planner today, mainly just showing cloudy skies, a very light breeze, mainly out of the east today with highs making it into the low 50s. It looks like we will have a couple rain showers moving in later on tonight. We'll deal with some scattered rain showers, mainly for the morning hours on Saturday. By Sunday, it looks like a little bit more steady rainfall, but behind that, we have a couple nicer days to look forward to. Monday, we become mostly sunny in the afternoon. Tuesday, we at least wake up to some sunshine, but some more rain moves back into the forecast late in the day on Tuesday. Temperature wise, Monday and Tuesday were close to our averages. We might even go slightly above average on Tuesday. Dry for Halloween, more oh. rain moves in for the end of the week. Good. Well, Mother Nature always likes to save the best weather, the rain, for the weekend, doesn't she? Yeah, she really <laughs> does, but uh, at least we have the nice start to the week next Very week. Very true. All right. Stay with us. You're watching Fox 47 Morning News at 7. Back on The Blend this morning, we have with us Frank Farmer, who is the president of American Metal Roofs. Good to see you. Congratulations, because I understand that's in order. You just were in Baltimore and received a, a really an amazing award. In fact, it uh, is a congratulations because you're recognized as a legend of the home improvement industry. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't know we knew that, did you? <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. That's yeah. like the Hall of Fame of home improvement. I mean, um, really? Yes, it is. Thank you. You're being all humble. Uh, <laughs> well, I tell you, when you're when you're voted on by the by your peers uh, nationally, and they give out very few of them, uh, a little over 30 of them in the last 25, 30 years, wow. and to be chosen, it, it was humbling, and to be uh, there to receive that, 
um, on behalf of uh, the company and, and the work that we've done in the last 20 years to see that body of work recognized uh, truly was truly was humbling. Yeah. You know, we, we built a company based on, with a totally different approach, an approach that maybe our products don't fit them. Um, a, a company that's based on honesty and integrity that said, uh, if our product isn't right for you, we're going to let you know. And if it's not, we're going to try to head you in a direction that possibly you can get your problem fixed, that even if it doesn't involve us. So a whole different approach to, to, to building a company. That's amazing. Now, aside from the industry accolades like your Legends Award, managing AMR's reputation with customers is probably even more important. Uh, it is. In this day and age where people can go online and rate you and you can get competitors can say some very vile things about you. Absolutely. You don't have to even be a customer to pretend you're a customer that's online. And companies hire companies to manage that reputation. However, we've been very fortunate. People in our industry understand that we are about integrity. They don't say a lot of things about that. Um, right. Well, and, and we have a quote, actually, that I want to read to you because it's from Todd Miller, who's the president of Isaiah Industries, which is the world's largest manufacturer of metal roofing. And it's there on the screen, and it says, I've worked with AMR since it was founded in 2000, and during that time I have seen significant growth and professionalism and... I would attest that no other metal roofing contractor in Michigan is their equal in terms of quality and breadth of experience as in the residential area. That's a huge accolade for you. Um, again, it, it's, it's humbling. We have grabbed some national attention uh, being here a local Michigan company, uh, so much so that we're working with manufacturers and other contractors to teach them how to market successfully with integrity. Well, American Metal Roofs, Frank, congratulations again. We've got your information on the screen. If you would like to give you a call. 7 Morning News at 7. Happening right now, finding the bomber investigators search for the sender of a string of suspicious packages, zeroing in now on a mail facility in Florida. Plus, the race for the governor's office in Michigan is tightening up, according to a new poll. And as the immigrant caravan makes its way to the U.S., hundreds of troops are being sent to the border. Live. Local. Fox 47 Morning News at 7 starts now. Good morning and welcome to Fox 47 Morning News. I'm Laura Painter and Jim Holton. Everyone wants to know the forecast today heading into the weekend. Forecast today, really not yep. all that bad. There okay. will be a lot of cloud cover around. Nice. Once we get into the weekend, oh. things are looking a little more wet. But that uh -oh. cloud cover is actually... <laughs> led to a little bit more mild start to our day. Currently sitting at 37 degrees in Lansing. It is 39 in St. John's, 41 for Charlotte and Jackson, 42 degrees this morning in Mason and Hillsdale at 43 degrees. All of those numbers about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than we were just 24 hours ago. Again, you can thank the cloud cover for that warmer start to our day, but because we are keeping that cloud cover around, high temperatures actually end up pretty close to what we saw yesterday. You may notice a few rain showers off to our west. You'll also notice some rain showers to our north and to our south this morning. Good news is most of those rain showers stay out of the picture today. The one exception may come into Hillsdale County. They could deal with a few rain showers very later on this afternoon. Otherwise, we end up with a cloudy day, a little bit on the cooler side, at least cooler than average. Highs today make it into the low 50s. Your 1-800 Hanson's weather kit this morning is Bailey of Hazlitt. Uh, so staying under the clouds this Friday. Staying under the clouds Friday. Looks like we'll be in the cloud cover Saturday and Sunday as well. Mm -hmm. Throw a couple rain showers in. Okay, thank you, Jim. The nationwide manhunt for whoever sent 10 bombs to critics of President Donald Trump and CNN's New York City office has led investigators to Florida. Several law enforcement officials familiar with the investigation say many of those packages went through this Postal Service facility in Opelika, Florida, that is north of Miami. Federal agents were at the mail facility investigating for hours this morning. That comes after three more packages with potential bombs were discovered. None of the 10 packages have exploded and no one has been hurt. Well, the feds say they are not ruling out the possibility of more packages being discovered. Extra security is expected as former President Barack Obama visits Detroit today. He's headlining a Democratic rally at Detroit's Cass Tech High School. 
The Secret Service, FBI, State Police and Detroit Police will be a part of the security for the event. The former president will be stumping for gubernatorial candidate Gretchen Whitmer, Senator Debbie Stabenow and other Democrat candidates. Meanwhile, a new poll shows Whitmer's lead over Republican gubernatorial opponent Bill Schuette is tightening up. According to a Detroit poll, Whitmer only leads with five points, with a margin of error at 4%. Libertarian Bill Jeleno is polling at 3%, and 7% say that they are undecided or have refused to answer. The Lansing School District is planning to hold more community forums to address violence in one of its schools. Dozens of parents showed up to last night's forum at Lansing Everett High School. The meeting was called after several fights broke out at the school, leading to arrests earlier this week. Parents and students say they heard conflicting stories about a gun. Both school administrators and police say no weapon was found, but some parents want school officials and police to be more transparent. Even if it wasn't 100% true that it was a gun here, what are y'all gonna do? Wait till y'all see the gun personally or somebody's dead? Because that, that might be a little bit too late. The students led, the fights rather, led to four students arrested and more than a dozen others suspended. School officials say they think a social media challenge was the reason behind the fight, but they are still investigating. The immigrant caravan heading north toward the U.S. may be facing a new hurdle. As John Lawrence reports, hundreds of troops are expected to be sent to stop them. It may take weeks to materialize, but a standoff at the border could be brewing. We have to protect our borders. We don't have borders, we don't have a country. Two caravans of men, women and children are marching through southern Mexico. Some are about a thousand miles away from the U.S. President Trump says they should return home and apply for citizenship like millions of others are doing. And the sad thing is like, okay, if 99% of them are wonderful people who are desperate and 1% of them are gonna go commit some heinous act of violence, that's still reason to stop the caravan. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, appearing on Fox News, says her department has asked for hundreds of troops to help prevent the migrants from entering the U.S. What we've asked them to do is help to bolster our capabilities. So we've asked for some air support, for some logistics, some planning, uh, vehicle barriers, engineering, uh, ways in which we can make sure that I can protect my officers and agents. Sources say the troops will be there to support civil authorities, but can defend themselves if needed. But Border Patrol officers will lead the effort to stop illegal migration. I'm John Lawrence reporting. There's a couple of road construction projects going on that could affect your drive to and from work. Near the state capitol in Lansing, there will be additional lane closures on South Grand Avenue from East Kalamazoo to East Michigan Avenue. Crews with the Lansing Board of Water and Light will be removing and replacing a steam vault. The BWL started the project back in August and today starts the next phase of it. The work is expected to be done by next Wednesday. In Jackson County, West Michigan Avenue between M60 and Glasgow Road in Blackman and Sandstone Townships is closed right now. Road crews have begun construction there and full lane closures will be happening. Detours will not be posted and expect delays if you have to go this way. No word on when the work will finish up. We are just a few days away from Halloween right now, and that means jack-o'-lanterns lighting up the streets. But with pumpkin carving comes the struggle to keep those works of art in pristine condition, or at least protecting them from caving in on themselves. It's recommended that you use either petroleum jelly, WD-40 hairspray, a bleach water mixture, or floor wax as a lubricant to keep your pumpkin from drying out. Now keep in mind, some of those items are flammable, so it's important to let those dry out before putting a candle inside your pumpkin. There is much more to come in your Fox 47 morning news after the break. Starbucks unveils a spooky Halloween frappuccino. We'll tell you all about their new witch's brew. Plus, a woman in China is in custody after police say she went on a stabbing spree at a school and later saved by the bell, literally the moment a would-be thief is busted by the homeowner thanks to an unblinking home tech gadget. And we're under the cloud cover this morning. It looks like the rain holds off today. That narrative changes a bit this weekend. I'll time everything out for you coming up just after the break. Stay with us. You're watching Fox 47 Morning News at 7.
Well, we are waking up to some fairly mild temperatures. A few of these numbers are actually a little bit above average. Currently, it's 41 degrees in Charlotte and Jackson, 42 for Mason. St. John's and Lansing a little bit cooler. They've dropped into the upper 30s, 39 for St. John's, 37 in Lansing. Now, a big reason for those slightly warmer temperatures, the cloud cover that's been in place throughout the overnight hours. And as we check out the almanac, you'll notice, yeah, those numbers in a few cases actually are above average. Typical lows this time of year have now fallen into the upper 30s. Our average highs, well, they're mainly in the mid 50s. Looks like mainly due to that cloud cover, we fall short of that number today, topping out around 50 degrees or maybe into the low 50s. Notice the cloud cover sticking around throughout the day. As we get to the later evening hours, there even is a slight chance for a few rain showers. Those best chances would be south of the Jackson area. And that would be coming off this rain system that's off to our south. This is actually the remnants of what was Hurricane Willa. It's going to be drenching the east coast and the northeast through the coming days. But it's really just a glancing blow off the system that we are looking at. The very northern and northwestern edge of the system by St. Louis would be passing off to our east as we head through the overnight. Still looks like it will give us just a couple light rain showers. Better chances for some widespread rain that moves in on Sunday and we'll be coming with that front that's located off to our west. So we'll check it out with the future track. A lot of cloud cover around throughout the day today. Slight chance of a few stray showers once we hit the afternoon hours. Better chances for some rain though once we hit the later evening hours. Again, mainly south of Jackson. Heading into the overnight though, that rain starts to spread a little bit further north. So we all have run the risk of seeing an isolated shower or two through the overnight as well as through your day on Saturday. Now, most of this rain on Saturday, mainly falling in the morning hours. Once we get to the later afternoon, we do start to dry out just a little bit and looks like we should be dry Saturday night into the early morning hours on Sunday. You can see that next front though, that's pushing in for the afternoon hours on Sunday. We'll deal with some rain showers then, but behind that front should start to clear up pretty nice Monday and at least for the start of your day on Tuesday. But for today, it is a few late rain showers, mostly cloudy skies, high temperatures today topping out into the low 50s and a very gentle breeze, mainly out of the east today. Through the overnight tonight, lows dipping only into the low 40s, so another fairly mild night. Again, you can thank the cloud cover for those more mild temperatures. Still a slight chance that we deal with a stray shower or two through the overnight, and it looks like we'll have that rain around mainly in the morning hours tomorrow. Otherwise, mostly cloudy skies tomorrow with a high of 48 degrees. Your seven day forecast shows those highs remaining in the upper 40s through the upcoming weekend. Rain showers around on Sunday. Looks like we do start to clear out through the day on Monday, though. At least Monday afternoon, we should become mostly sunny. Temperature wise Monday back into the low to mid 50s. Tuesday mid to upper 50s for your highs. Whoa. We could actually make it above average and it has been a while since we've been <laughs> able to say that. A couple rain showers, though, moving in late Tuesday. We'll deal with some more rain on Thursday, but Right now, unlike yesterday, Halloween is looking to be dry. Ah, huh. Could spell something good for the kids. Yeah, you know, it's still <laughs> six days out, so a lot can change, and there's rain chances at least through the middle of next week. That's so true. I'm excited. Fingers off, we can keep it dry. Yeah, that upper 50s, that's quite Excited nice. about upper 50s. Yes. Must be almost November. Yeah, took us a while, <laughs> but we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. All right, if you have a sweet tooth, it may cost you a little more now to satisfy it. Candy company Hershey says it is raising prices on a fifth of its products and prices will increase about two and a half percent. There's no word yet on exactly which Hershey's products will be affected by the price hike. The increase is a result of rising commodity and shipping costs for the company. The price change will go into effect next year. And check this out. Starbucks has unveiled its latest creation called the Witch's Brew. It's a Halloween drink. This frightening frappuccino features purple cream toad's breath, chia seed bat warts, and vanilla whipped cream swamp fog. The Witch's Brew is available at participating Starbucks starting today and goes until all those supplies run out. We know those seasonal specialty drinks have become quite a fan favorite for Starbucks. After the break, the remnants of Hurricane Willa still battering several states in heavy rain. Many neighbors struggling this morning to keep up with the rising water. We're tracking the latest. Stay with us. You're watching Fox 47 Morning News at 7. The remnants of Tropical Storm Willup is drenching parts of the country, trying to recover from historic flooding over the past few weeks. The storm system that drenched parts of Texas, New Orleans and Florida is heading north today. It's expected to bring heavy rains and wind to Wilmington, North Carolina, which was an area hit hard by Hurricane Florence last month. 
The rain is expected to spread into the northeast later tonight and into tomorrow morning. Forecasters predict that coastal flooding possibilities in the northeast as well as flooding inland. Up to three inches of rain is possible for major cities along the way. An update now to a story that we first told you about last month. Two South Carolina deputies have been fired after police say they drove a van into floodwaters, killing two mental health patients inside. The Horry County Sheriff's Office says that Joshua Bishop and Stephen Flood were terminated as the result of an ongoing investigation into last month's drownings. Now, according to investigators, the deputies were transporting two women to a medical facility when the floodwaters rose and swept the van away. Police say the men tried to save the women but were unsuccessful. A woman is in custody after Chinese police say she went on a stabbing spree at a school, killing two children and hurting more than a dozen others. Police say the woman stormed a kindergarten and attacked the children as they returned from outside this morning. Fourteen children were taken to the hospital, but their injuries are not known at this time. Investigators are now trying to determine a motive. An Oregon-based nonprofit is helping a young girl with a terminal illness have a magical Halloween. That girl's wheelchair is being transformed into a costume. Sharice LeClaire reports. One, two, three. This pink Minnie Mouse magic wheelchair almost as bright as the smile on Riley Markey's face at the reveal in Derry. She's got her own car now. Thanks to an Oregon-based nonprofit started by a dad who has children who use wheelchairs, his idea is spreading with volunteer builders across the country like Bonnie Regan. Two months of, of just working really hard, knowing that that's the outcome. Over those two months, Bonnie used insulation foam and other materials to transform the chair into this. Welcome smiles for Riley, who has been through a lot in her young life. Riley has a terminal illness called Lee's disease. It's a neural disease. Diagnosed when she was 13 months old, Riley, now five, has surpassed the odds. We could be going through the worst things with our jobs and our home and everything, but she's going through the worst thing and she could still have a smile on her face. And not only does Riley get this very special chair from Magic Wheelchair, but her friend Silas will also be getting his very own on Saturday. Over like a week's worth of time, we asked him every day which costume he wanted to be, and he ended up picking Max from Where the Wild Things Are. Both kids will be trick-or-treating in style. That's awesome because it, it, it doesn't make the wheelchair like a, like a tool. It's actually something that's kind of fun for her to do. An amazing discovery. After a fire at a historic church in Massachusetts we told you about earlier this week is now providing renewed faith for its parishioners. This painting of Jesus was inside the church at the time of the fire and it made it out untouched by the flames. The First Baptist Church in Massachusetts, about 15 miles outside of Boston, went up in flames during severe storms. The cause of the fire is under investigation right now, but neighbors tell investigators that they saw the church getting hit by lightning moments before the fire broke out. A 56-year-old man who's been dubbed the French Spider-Man is at it again, and he was spotted climbing one of England's tallest skyscrapers. We have video. It shows a daredevil climber, cool as a cucumber, while scaling the massive tower, which stands at more than 700 feet. He, his name is Alain Robert, and he climbed the tower without any wires, just using his hands and some chalk to improve his grip. His manager says that Robert was, has climbed 160 skyscrapers to date. Yeah, kids, please do not try this at home. Jim, I can't even... Does he know there's an elevator or some stairs that he could <laughs> use? It's the, an easy way to get to that view. The point is the thrill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but you're right, though. I, I, I <laughs> the can't point even... is the journey. Yes, exactly. Uh, too rich for my blood there. Mm. But this weather, I think... Pretty calm, not too crazy. Yeah, really nothing too crazy today. Mm -hmm. In fact, temperature is actually running slightly above average this oh, yes. morning. Does not mean we're in for an above average day overall. Oh. That's due to the cloud cover. It's kept us warm through the overnight. It should hinder our warming through the day, though. So high temperatures today likely only making it up to around 50 degrees. But right now, we're close to the 40 degree mark. 39 in Lansing, 41 right now for Jackson and Charlotte. Satellite and radar showing the cloud cover that's around right now. We do have rain showers off to our north, off to our west, off to our south. So there's rain chances today, but the chances are not great. The best chances of seeing any of that rain today would come later on this evening, and it mainly is south of Jackson. 
as we had as we uh, check out your planner for today. Well, mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. Temperatures around 48 degrees at the lunch hour. We top out today around 51 or 52 degrees. Again, those rain showers could be moving in later on this evening, but since we have that rain and cloud cover on tonight, we're again looking at a mild start to your day on Saturday with temperatures in the low 40s. Saturday and Sunday, though, the best we'll do temperature wise is the upper 40s. Scattered rain showers mainly in the morning hours on Saturday. More in the way of some steady rainfall on Sunday in the afternoon. Starting to clear out a bit for the start of next week, though, should be pretty nice by Monday afternoon with mostly sunny skies, temperatures in the mid-50s. Oh, very nice. Well, we're going to toss it over to Bob and Mary in the Morning Blend, but we'll be back. Stay with us. You're watching Fox 47 Morning News at 7. On the blend this morning, we have back with this Ashley Burns, who is the senior leasing consultant with Grand Haven Manor. Hi, how good are morning. you? Good morning. Good morning. Good. How are you guys doing? We're great. Good. Tell our viewers why people choose to live at Grand Haven Community. Our residents choose to uh, live at Gr Grand Haven Manor Communities because it's ultimately a solution to taking care of a massive home. Uh, you know, taking care of a house can be a lot of work, no matter what age you are. I mean, right. even my someone my age, I mean, it, it can be a lot. Mm -hmm. So just having that solution available is just wonderful and um, you know a lot of times they do choose to leave their home and come come live at a community like Grand Haven. Right. You always have so many events coming up, but I'm wondering if there's any special events coming up that maybe the public can be invited to. Absolutely. Uh, we do have a lot of events for our residents in house, but we're having our 14th annual holiday extravaganza coming up. Uh, so every year we have a shopping event so that our residents and members in the community can shop without having to go through the hassle of all the traffic. Right. I mean, you know, Black Friday is crazy anyway, mm -hmm. but still, from around Thanksgiving all the way up to Christmas, the parking lots are full, there's long walks, so we have over 30 vendors that are coming to our communities to, um, you know, set up shop and sell their items to uh, our residents oh, and hopefully wonderful. members of the community. That's what, great. What types of vendors? Uh, well, of course, we're having Mary Kay and Avon, which are two staples, Scentsy, uh, lots of home-baked goods, uh, candles, crocheted items, fleece blankets, a photographer is coming so that residents can schedule sessions to take family portraits oh, with nice. uh, their children and their grandchildren, even their great grands. Um, so lots of different vendors um, far and wide in between. November 9th from 10 to 2 again. Yes. Um, what's the difference between independent living and assisted living? Uh, independent living, uh, you really have control over your living. Assisted living, they give you a package and ha you have to take everything that they offer, whether or not you use it or not. At our community, it's strictly apartment style living, but we have tons of services on site so that you're comfortable in your apartment home resident by resident not everyone's the same of course right <laughs> how is the Grand Haven Manor community different than other retirement communities so our community is a la carte so similar to the difference between us and assisted living you have full reign to do everything item by item instead of a package so uh, we do have that um, flexibility so that you can have the type of living that you need. That's well, great. very cool. Thank you again for being <laughs> with us. For and having we're me. of course going to put that information on the screen. If you'd like to call Grand Haven Manor, give them a call at 367 8990 or visit their website, Grand Haven Manor. Hey, welcome back in. Harry Potter fans are in for a treat this weekend. The Grand Ledge Area District Library will be hosting a Harry Potter party this Saturday from 2 to 4. Themed snacks and games will be available and guests are encouraged to wear their favorite Harry Potter clothing. We'll have more local events and things to do right here on Fox 47. If you have an event that you want to share, just send us an email around town at fox47news.com. And now for a look at more of what's going on around town, let's toss things over to our Around Town reporter. Here's what's going around town for kids like me. If space is the final frontier, you can discover space at Abrams Planetarian at the Michigan State University. Abrams Planetarian has dedicated its weekends to shows for family just like yours. The shows are a great way for children to be introduced to various and fascinating space-related topics where they can learn all the weird and wonderful facts about what goes on up in our universe. You will be amazed with what you might see. Perhaps you will see the craters of the moon up close 
Or maybe you will see the rings of Saturn with your very own eyes, or maybe even the big spot on Jupiter. These sessions occur about twice a month from April to October, so make sure you get in early and don't miss out. For this and more events for kids like you, visit fox47news.com. I'm Shelby Galan, now back to Fox 47 Studios. You know what happens a lot once the holidays start rolling around? Thieves taking packages from strangers' porches. But just wait until you see how one Texas homeowner caught an alleged thief. Michelle Toll was on break at work, but she got an alert from her phone. She has one of those digital doorbells, you know, that lets you see who's at your door through a mobile app. Sure enough, she opened that app up and saw a woman taking packages from her porch. So she confronted her. What are you doing? Is this Deborah's house? No, no, it's not. Put my packages back on the on the porch. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Sorry she got caught. Well, after getting caught red-handed, the woman leaves, so Tull called police. And this is great here. Those boxes, by the way, they were not filled with electronics, jewelry, expensive stuff, but really just giant boxes <laughs> of cat litter. Oh, oh snap. Four giant boxes of cat litters. How many cats do you think they have? Oh my gosh, 20? Maybe just stocking up for the year. Who yeah, knows? maybe. Maybe. And you were asking, where's Deborah? Yeah, where did Deborah go? I hope that they've got her package <laughs> I safe. know, her cat litter. Just looking out. <laughs> All right, and you're looking out for the temperatures and potential rain. Yeah, potential, potential. for rain. That's what we'll okay. call it today. Okay. Best chances would be south of Jackson. Most of us just end up with the cloud cover through the day. But that cloud cover, it has kept us much more mild than we were yesterday. Right now it is 39 in Lansing and St. John. 41 is your current temperature in Charlotte and Jackson. All of those numbers about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than this time yesterday when we were sitting in the 20s. Now again, that's due to the cloud cover that's been around. A couple rain showers off to our north. We have some rain showers off to our west, even some rain to our south. It's that rain to our south that gives us a chance for some rain showers this evening. Again, the best chances would be south of Jackson.